straight on into it, and Sue in the end just kind of outplaying Solar to take the advantage, to take the lead. Let's see what he can do. It's going to be to the bottom right hand side, our Blue Zerg player, who did lose out 1 to 2 against his opponent here today earlier. It is Sue in the bottom right. Top left hand side, our red Zerg player, representing Splice, of course, is Solar. And we have seen a good mixture of builds from these guys in the earlier ZVZ series from 10 pools, 10 pool Bane. We've seen, we, we really did see everything. And again, I did enjoy that rush to kind of Spire play we saw from both of them on this map before as well. I'd love to see that happening again and maybe see what Solar tries to change to just solidify himself in the game a bit more so than he did last time around and to stop himself from dying to the run buys and so on. So, setting up, looking to see what's going to happen as we uh, build up in the early few minutes. So again, do let us know what's up in the chat today, guys. Nice to see so many of you around and discussing the series and discussing the games and other bits and pieces as well. It's always awesome to have a nice active chat, of course. It lets me know that you guys are out there and watching. And Well, let us know right now how you guys are doing and let me know who you're cheering for, perhaps, in this final series of the night. Whether you're cheering on Solo, whether you're cheering on Sue, I would love to hear it, so... Make your voices heard. Let me hear you. what's up as we do set up and go into this. And let's see what will be happening over the next few minutes. Hatchgas Pool. The opening on either side of the map, minus the fact that Solo does not have the gas. But the hatchery first is the important thing to take note of really here. Just the idea that, you know, they're not going to be being super aggressive early. We'll see what Solo wants to do without the gas here. See what he wants to set up in towards over the next few moments. Andy Man in the chat for the GF4 says, I'm rooting for the Zerg. Ah, I see what you did there, mate. It's a classic. It's a classic. Gotta say. Let me see another drone or so on the way up on either side. Again, Hatch Gas Pool coming up from both then minus Solo's lack of gas means that he really will be focusing maybe perhaps on a third hatchery maybe he just wants to build up a couple of extra queens he will obviously be playing without ling speed so maybe he just wants to rush up in towards roaches the gasless play style one which can definitely be abused and taken advantage of if Sue can see it coming it was something that was actually a big thing back in Wingers of Liberty and people figuring out how to play against gasless without falling behind and all the rest of it ling speed still coming up here from Sue as we see the bane nest and drop down for him as well, so some potential aggression on the way from Sue now. Obviously, Solo will be looking to defend with Queens, a wall off, a spine perhaps. If Sue does get aggressive, he might very well just kind of with this Ling Bane just sit back a little bit while taking a third hatchery, not make much more than 10 Zerglings or so, and all the rest of it. Two Zerglings will move on forwards, and we are just going to be seeing them uh, jumping up in towards the main base. I think that Jin on Matt actually coming in through here and able to pick off the link just nice and quickly. Flair is on the way up from Sue, and so he is going to play fairly similarly to the last time around now. Last time they did get Ling Speed, of course, and Baneling's Nest. So Sue pretty much playing the same as he did in game number one of the previous series that these guys played. Whereas we see Sola is going to be... Uh, well, again, up until just recently he was gasless, and now he's taken his gases. We'll start to see him getting ready for the wall off of Evo Chamber, Evo Chamber... And Rotron. Or oh, Evo Chamber, Evo Chamber, Rotron, or Evo Chamber, Rotron, Evo Chamber. It doesn't really matter which order you put them in. Just gonna be one Evo and a uh, Rotron for now. Queens will fill the rest of the gap for the foreseeable future. I guess generally you don't usually go for the. Um, you don't usually go for kind of the double upgrades. You just go for one. The second Evo Chamber is really just a thing about walling off and. Uh, you know, walling off and kind of staying safe. Hadzi, what's up? Draws his katana from his say and slices through Wardy, his mighty foe, with the cheer 86! Coming in the bit boss, thank you very much for the cheer, mate. Thank you for the bits. Congrats on being the bit boss. As you see, these couple of links moving out into the middle of the map. So you're here, gonna nibble away a little bit. So they're actually gonna be able to come through and kind of fight back as a couple more links from Sue. And he does continue to clean on up. Well played so far. 
as that lair comes up from Solar, plus one missile attack on the way down from Solar as well. And we're just going to be seeing that Spire from Sue coming into the main base. So, everyone here really kind of playing so differently to previously. Oh, Solar player playing so differently to earlier. And now we're going to be seeing Sue going to be going into that Spire again is just the same stuff from him. So, so interesting to be able to see the comparison as Solar will take that third hatchery. It's something that maybe Sh Sue should look to try and be able to punish with the uh, Lings coming out with Ling speed. Oh, but I love that from Solo. He actually never started an upgrade here, and instead he just waited for the lair to finish to start up a Nidus network. Obviously, if you have enough queens coming out of a Nidus, it becomes very difficult for Sue to be able to defend if he's going Mutas. However, Sue has very good coverage of his base, and so he does see potentially Solo. Yeah, Solo realizes there's no way he can actually put this Nidus to actually be able to take advantage of it. So Solo backs away. He decides not to go for this. He saw the spines. He never saw the Spire, but I think he's got a very good read as to what is going on. The lack of a Roach Warren, seeing the Spine Crawlers as well. I think Solo very much so does know what's happening here, but just doesn't feel as though the opportunity is there to put that Nidus down. So unfortunately for him, Solo is going to be having to just play out this game of Infestors and seeing how well he can play against these Mutas. Now Solo will have a better ground army. He will have that plus one missile upgrade coming through. And interesting to choose the Infestors straight away rather than the uh, potential Hydralisks, which are just a little bit more mobile and I feel in general have a better transition through into the later game if the Lurk is coming up as well. So it's interesting to see him just going straight for Infest. I mean, Infest can work very well against Diamuters, and it might just be because he's already got so many Queens up. Infested Queen as a composition can actually work out wonderfully, so it might just be that fact that he built so many Queens to help, you know, go for the Nidus attack, which he never then went for. And so now here we are with kind of, you know, Queen Infested being the choice of defense. He is finding the third overlord of the game now. A nice pick off and actually supply block solo momentarily. The overseer coming in from Sue as well allows him to get rid of a creep tumor. He'll pull around the side and will once again just be able to get another overlord right there. In a second, he gets it. Again, the queen force though is scary. And with the infested coming up, as soon as they have energy, they will be able to fungal growth these mutas. And that's going to be the kind of real surprise factor right away. And that's what the mutas have to be so careful of because it's only eight mutas. Sue transitions out of this afterwards. It's not Muta versus Muta, so he doesn't continue to build the Mutas like he did last time around. But with 8 Mutas, you know, you can afford to kind of, you know, you want to do some damage, but you can't afford to lose the Mutas, because you want to consistently be this force on the map that slows Solo down. That Queen, by the way, 2 HP, what a sneak, sneaky little Queen she is, getting away just in time there. But you want to keep these Mutas on the map to keep on maintaining damage while you kind of slow Solo down, and get yourself set up into an army that can fight on the ground. Hydrogen coming in here from Sue, something that's been very popular lately for the Muta player, has been to go into the Hydra Den and then the Lurker Den very quickly to set up a very strong defense against what is generally a bit of a stronger ground army from your opponent who's been playing Roaches and better upgrades right from the get-go. Especially defensively, Lurkers can work out very effect uh, very well in the ZVZ because there's no real immediate counterplay if those Lurkers are just sitting in the back. You have to just run in and start throwing those battles down and targeting them which isn't always the best way to kind of play that sort of situation. Here's the Fungal Growth though. That's the Fungal that might start changing this up because now Sue is very likely going to lose these Mutas. Of course the Bowser will help out and all but three of the Mutas are going to go down. So Sue loses out there. He got one more Overlord and that's what he was killing when he did get caught in that. As we're going to be seeing the uh, Mutas of Sue backing away over to the right side a little bit. Fourth Hatch coming down. I mean at this point Sue is going to have to start that transition out of, well he has been transitioning out of Mutas for a long time. Without the mutas on the map again, has he been able to buy enough time already? Or is Solo going to get across here and do damage before Sue is able to kind of come back into the game with the Lurker Den, etc.? Jinjin coming up the left hand side. Sue so has a lot of money in the bank. Obviously, he's really waiting for the Lurkers to come up here. Looks as like though Solo's just happy to play the longer game, though. He's starting up the Hive. And the Hive here in this scenario will obviously a third attack upgrade would be fantastic. But you can also get those Vipers out, or even start taking up in towards Broodlords, etc. But Vipers against the Lurkers are a fantastic way to shut those Lurkers down, because with the Lurkers kind of coming out, it's very difficult to kind of do much. But if you throw Blinding Clouds down, suddenly those Lurkers have to reposition, and it just gives you the better start off to fight as those Infestors. We're starting to move out in the center. Fortunately, not fired by the Mutas and the Overseer, otherwise he would have probably lost one, maybe two. Roach is now starting to burrow around as Solo will be looking for damage around the map. He finds the fourth base to the upper right hand side. Sue is just still heavily behind when it comes to supply. I mean, you got to give credit where credit's due. He has been setting up into lurkers, etc. And that's potentially some higher tech we could argue. But I still don't feel he should be this far behind. Given the current situation of the game. I don't feel as though it's been 
that bad for him, you know? I see these roaches. It's gonna be coming through. So we'll just look for some harassment to help himself out in the game. Some to the south side as well. However, this overseer has picked up on that. And an overseer morphin here as well. So very clever. Realizing that if there is uh, some roaches down here, very likely to be roaches elsewhere as well. In fact, one roach over there gets dealt with. As you can see, these roaches here will be a little bit of a nuisance. And as Sue comes in, he'll lose a spine crawler perhaps against this. Oh, spine crawler! Actually, stays alive, albeit very low HP. Could get transfused up those. We will see these roaches going down then. Good defense by Sue. Really doesn't allow Solo to do anything just yet. Now Sue is maxed out. And that's the thing. Solo, well, he's getting some vipers up. Abducts, blinding clouds, all are very effective against those lurkers. So he's me just over to this side, going to clean up some creep wherever possible, and again, just trying to be a little bit of a nuisance. At this stage of the game, it feels like the mutas might just want to try and trade themselves out for whatever, just so you can actually try and get a kind of, you know, another six supply of real fighting units up and in this. And he's going to back away. Mm, he's dodging fungals. I mean, that's still nice, right? Forcing a couple of fungals out. He won't be too bothered about losing one to the Cross of Bar, I don't think, and... Yeah, again, he's at the same time, he's actually keeping this army up to the northern side with just three meters while the rest of his army moves down to the south. Well, Sue, now he's going to be able to burrow these lurkers between the fourth base and third base, and that's going to force a really difficult situation for Solar, who has to fight into a whole chunk of lurkers. However, Abduct's available, and that could make the difference right here, as you'll see. So, he's going to turn around, maybe try and help push those uh, vipers away. Ooh, nice bile fungal combo there. Not many fungals around, though, because he did use a couple on those low number of meterless earlier. More Hydra's on the way up here from Sue, who gets rid of the fourth base. That's already a great position he puts himself into now. And we're going to be seeing the rest of this army of Solar. So just sat over to the left, and here we go. Trying to push on down. Sue looking to see what's going on as well. A little bit some pieces going on right now. We're going to be seeing Infested just get targeted down. And Ravager getting picked up as well. Another couple of corrosive Biles coming into play. Queen also getting shot down here. And Sue still just sat to the left-hand side. A few Vipers still just overhead. So the Overseer is just about going to get taken down in time there, and we are still just seeing a few of those lurkers in the back still around, and Sue just doing a great job of solidifying this position, despite having losing some, been losing some units. Look at his reinforcing hydras, which means he can morph in more lurkers, of course. That's going to be great. He takes this fight to the right-hand side, which is very beneficial for him. He just outnumbers Solo over here, and Solo has nothing going on around the map. He's got finally a set of roaches coming up the north side. It's going to take forever for them to really come into play. And he's just continuing Sue to push in towards the third hatchery now. Solo looking as though he's going to be in a lot of trouble here. Some corrosive bows once again. There's another couple of fungals keep on landing. Roaches, ravages, hydras pushing down the left hand side. You can see another few roaches getting picked away at right now. Corrosive bows again doing a bit more damage. Still, these roaches pushing down the right. And you see these, uh, this hatchery can get picked off in a moment or so. And still, this army in general of Solo looking to see what it can do. I mean, he's just trying to push against this. Nice planning clouds will help a little bit. But the third hatch is going to fall. Meanwhile, the roaches do arrive on the other side of the map. So finally, some damage will be done here by Sola. Something to distract Sue and force him to leave his reinforcements at home rather than just bringing them across to make Sola's life even more miserable. The thing is, there are reinforcements coming out. And so these roaches of Sola only have so long to get damage done. Now they try and borrow and run away, but overseers overhead help out for a while. And he does pick up a few of them, although the rest will start to get into position. Uh, just pushing towards lurkers again on the high ground. I mean, there's a, nah, I mean, there's lurkers here. There's vipers here, and if the uh, flying clouds will come in, I think Sue may be starting to overcommit a little bit to this position, and he will get taken down. This army will fall. The solar is just on two bases with a third hatch now rebuilding down to the low ground. Man, look at Sue's army though. He's just rebuilding roaches, and right now it might just be sheer number of units that could work out for him. Although Sula does have. Well, he does have a lot of uh, upgrade advantage as well. Plus three against plus two, plus one. That third missile upgrade will generally be a bit more important. As you're going to see, Ravagers, though, they're not very good without anything in front of them. And these pure Rogers are just going to swarm right now. The Infestors didn't have energy right away either. They got picked off without doing anything. And that's going to be GG. Sue takes game number one of the best of three. And he's going to be one up. One map. And to the top left-hand side, our Red Zerg player. Give it up, guys. If you're going to be cheering on, Sue. Rematch curse is happening, says beep beep. As we do have Sola in the top right hand side, our Teal Zerg player playing for Splice. Of course, that rematch curse in these double elim brackets has been a very real thing in throughout the seasons of the GSL and, well, all events in the past months, years even. 
It's a very real thing, though, because the mindset of the matches as well is very different, especially if you think about it. Like, maybe not so much between Siri and Solo, but in some matches, in a rematch sort of scenario, the player who won the first time, maybe he won because of some special builds they had prepared, something along those lines. The second time around, you know, it's very likely that the player, you know, the other player figures out his mistakes and fixes up and prepares against what his opponent was doing the first time around, so... It's a, it's a tough one, you know? These players are so good that they learn from series to series, and so you lose out the first time around, you figure it out before you lose the second time. It's an interesting one. It really is. Initial Overlord Scouts up south from both players. Reasoning for that is that you want to get over the natural expansion nice and early. You want to be able to see the, uh, you know, you want to be able to see basically a hatchery ASAP, or lack of hatchery. It's a tough one, four player maps in the ZVZ, but both players, somewhat gentlemen's agreement here. Hatchery first from both, so we won't see any shenanigans right away to punish either of these guys. As we just set up and get rolling into game number two of this best of three. This time is two also gonna bypass his gas rather than hatch gas pool. Just gonna go hatch pool, we'll see if he still has the gas on. Again, just hatches coming up, pools as well. Bits and pieces. Nothing really too crazy. So you just see overlords passing over and head and solo moving around as well. Again, when it's just a hatchery first, this next work of sort can just make it take a little bit longer to really get set up into the game. And that's what we're seeing right now, just a little bit of a slower start up here in the early stages. Gives me a chance to remind you guys that tomorrow we have a double header for you when it comes to StarCraft 2 action. We start the day at 1 p.m. CEST with the OSC Masters Cup number 100. $1,000 plus on the line. Qualifier number one from 1 p.m. BST tomorrow. Uh, 1 p.m. CST, CST tomorrow, sorry. And of course, then after that we will be leading into at 8 p.m. CEST the Six Worker Star Cup, the one we're watching right now, the playoffs. It's going to be an exciting day of StarCraft 2. A lot of action tomorrow. Looking forward to it. We'll also, between those events, rebroadcast Group A of this tournament, so if you missed out, you'll be able to catch on up all over again, which will be great. We'll just check out what's going on there. There's a couple of Zerglings just going to push on over to the right-hand side. Sue, going to look to see what's up and what's happening. More and more drones coming up here from Sola, so... Really, just kind of both players drone right now. Sue taking a little bit of a worker lead a little bit earlier in the game. Nothing too ridiculous or crazy, though, I would say. Pretty, pretty straight up stuff. The Queen's going to work their way through this Overlord, however. That Overlord is going to be dropping in the next few moments, so. Overlord does get taken down. And we've seen this Lair on the way up from Sue as well, so. And again, just sort of building up straight into Lair kind of early in the game. This time both players have bypassed the link speed, they're both playing greedy, and for a lair like this it is generally expected to be that Roach Bear playstyle, so... Just, uh... Have you seen the uh, Rotron Eva Chamber coming on down and... Send up into this. This one missile attack from Solar coming up on the natural expansion. Again, very standard slow kind of player style here so far. Just players want to build up into the plus one roaches. We'll see if they cut workers at about 45, 46, which is the full two base saturation with three gases. 16 on each mineral line makes 32 plus 9. is about the 41 marker, so I guess around here they start cutting roaches and they start looking towards, well, I guess, third hatcheries, obviously, but looking towards potential roach-based attacks with roach speed and plus one missiles finishing in the next minute and a half or so. So setting up in towards this. And a whole bunch of roaches continue to come up here. The Overseer from Sue coming up on the right-hand side of the map. We'll be moving forward to see what's up. 
Two queens from Solo are going to move forwards and we'll just try and nibble away at that. And obviously, C will have his overseer pushed away. He just wants to try and pick up information. So far, neither player really sees what is going on. They can make some good assumptions. Neither of them have seen any speed lanes. You know, neither of them have, you know, both have seen this third hatchery coming down. So while they haven't explicitly seen, okay, you've got Rotor in an Evo chamber, you've rushed into a lair just as I have, they're probably putting the pieces together of what they haven't seen to be able to figure out that they are pretty much mirroring each other right now. That's the sort of level of these players where they understand this game to the point that if something doesn't happen at a certain time, okay, then something, you know, then it's probably this instead. That said, of course, this is six worker start and the time is very different to what players are used to nowadays, but the idea of kind of the rough essence of what they're at is still sort of there, you know? Roger Speed will be finishing momentarily for both then. Plus one missiles, not far off. And again, do we see an attack from either? As the third hatches are up, of course, it is a chance to potentially start making roaches and to start making drones again to saturate, and both players are going to start doing that right from the get-go here. Six drones coming up from Sue, three from Solar, ten drones from Sue. He does start to push on in. Stops in his watchtower as he sees this over a lot. A lot of these roaches just sat here for Solar. As we're going to be seeing the Overseer coming up as well. So, Overseer on the way up. Creep still spreading out and towards the center of the map on either side, actually. And uh, both, I, you know, obviously both of them have the idea of wanting to be able to quickly move over with their own roaches. So, just a few extra drones ahead already. And of course, you know, if Solar doesn't take advantage of the, you know, the few extra roaches, which would be hard to do, it means that Sue is just getting a little bit further ahead every few seconds here as those five extra drones keep mining. We're just going to keep pulling over to the left-hand side. Roaches split up, and we are going to see the Roaches of Solar just trying to push on through. Roaches of Versu. A little bit of damage as well, turning around, doing a little bit here and there. We're just going to be seeing the Queens just continue to push the uh, Overlords away. So, I mean, it is kind of interesting. Solar has two full energy Queens here, which actually gives him kind of like six extra Roaches if he kind of transfuse each time. It's a, it's a lot to have, you know, it does make a difference in fights, but obviously if he becomes the aggressor, there is Queen Samsu as well, albeit they don't have quite as much energy as these roaches, as these Queens of Solar have. Obviously Solar's been banking energy on these Queens with the idea of perhaps being able to just kind of have two Queens to use as kind of transfuse mules, whereas the other Queens have been injecting, etc. Solar's, you know, Sue doesn't have quite the same sort of thing, he has just been, still less Queens perhaps, no, just four. He's just not been, uh, Spreading out his energy usage a bit more, or just using a bit more of it as well. Rogers and Ravagers sit on the top side of the map, and we are going to be seeing still just the plus two missile attack coming through from both, and I would be surprised to see an attack before plus two missiles. But you can see the kind of danger for Solar right now is that Sue is tw you know, 20 seconds ahead of the plus two missile attack upgrade, and that's 20 seconds where if Sue can take a fight, he could really get a lot done here. He's a little bit of army supply ahead as well, obviously offset by the fact that Solar has a shorter reinforcement distance. Well, not that much shorter. Like, main base to the, where the fight's going to happen down here is kind of the same as the third base to suit out here as well. So, it's not that bad for Sue to reinforce and to fight this if he wants to, if this plus two about to finish up. Let's see if he will. He's starting to spread out into a concave. He's been poisoning himself aggressively for a while. And here he goes, starting to push on forward. Solar, how does he fight against this? He's not split into that concave as well as Sue is. His initial vials will not force Sue back. Sue just dies on the opportunity. And now Solar's backed into a corner. Look at all these roaches that are not doing anything at all for Solar. Sue's concave really paying off for him right now. There's more corrosive bars coming down, and Sue is really can't to connect with some of these bars while Solar doesn't seem to be doing anything at all. And that lack of the upgrade, the lack of the plus two for 20 seconds or so is having a huge impact on this fight. Look at how one-sided this is. 50 supply lead for Sue. GG just like that from Solar. Sue takes the 2-0. A concave plus two over plus one. GG, Sue will be completely.